for staying around until the end of the session. Um, today I would like to talk to you about um, part of my PhD research, which is mainly um, trying to reconstruct ancient white testes genomes from victims of the second plague pandemic, and hopefully also convince you that um, by comparing these genome with genomes with all the diversity of Yersinia pestis that we find around the world today, we can make inferences on the gem demographic history of, of this bacterium. So just some words on the ecology of plague. So we also heard this, this morning that plague is not predominantly a human pathogen. It's rather um, a pathogen that is maintained um, as an enzootic within these enzootic cycles within um, sylvatic rodent populations. Um, and transmitted within these uh, populations through the flea vector, but occasionally can jump to um, other mammals that are not, um, that are more susceptible to the disease and therefore cause um, very, very um, drastic symptoms and uh, mortality within um, only a few days. Um, this is a map that shows the regions where um, there are sil sylvatic plague foci, um, and how this coincides with countries that reported plague um, in the last years. And these foci ha can either be, have either been there for several thousands of years, for example, the ones that are around the Caspian Sea or the ones in East Asia, perhaps, um, but also others are directly related to this um, rapid and long distance travel of the disease that we have seen through the three plague pandemics. Um, the first plague pandemic that occurred between the 6th and 8th centuries um, AD. Um, the second plague pandemic between the 14th and 18th century, and this will be the main topic of my talk today. And the third plague pandemic, um, which has mostly left descendants around the world today, for example, uh, the foci in Madagascar and um, in the Americas. Um, but Places like Europe that have been afflicted by those earlier, the first two pandemics, uh, don't show any foci today. And that's why we're actually looking into the archaeological record to be able to <coughs> understand better what was going on during that time. So the second plague pandemic uh, began with the Black Death in Europe uh, between 1347-1353. And it's through historical records, um, it is supposed to have killed up to 50% of the European population at the time. Um, it's thought to have entered Europe, perhaps from China, through trade routes, um, entered through Kaffa and then afflicted the uh, main Mediterranean ports in Europe and then making its way up to Central and Northern Europe. Um, but plague did not stop there. Um, after the Black Death, there's uh, several outbreaks of plague documented in, in Europe until the 18th century where the disease essentially disappeared from the continent. And the next pand pandemic um, occurrence of the disease is the third pandemic that starts from China in the 19th century and then disseminates throughout uh, most of the world uh, during that time. So um, this is a brief... Um, representation uh, and schematic re representation of the Yersinia pestis family tree, which is mainly made up of uh, five, five main branches. Uh, branch zero, which is the most basal branch of the tree that at some point um, in history uh, erupted through a radiation event and event eventually gave rise to most of the pestis diversity that occurs around the world and we know of today. Uh, branch one is associated to the third plague pandemic and has been sampled in all these areas that were that occur that where the pandemic um, occurred and where we don't find these ancient foci today like Madagascar and uh, the Americas also and branch two three and four are mostly sampled in uh, China and the former Soviet Union today in uh, sylvatic rodent uh, populations. <coughs> 
So what we now un until now know from sequencing um, Yersinia pestis genomes from the second plague pandemic is that the black death genome that was sequenced in 2011 from plague victims in London falls very close to this radiation event that happened and perhaps um, this was the event that um, gave rise to most of the plague diversity that we know of and exists around the world today. Um, a second strain that was also mentioned in the same 2011 study um, concerns an, a strain that was isolated from uh, an outbreak that happened in the second half of the 14th century in London, so this is after the Black Death. Um, and this strain seems to be more derived on, on branch one and therefore closely, more closely related than the Black Death strain to these third plague pandemic um, strains. And this is where, for the first time, it was hypothesized that perhaps the second and third plague pandemic, uh, there's, a, there's a connection between the two pandemics, uh, perhaps from a lineage that migrated from Europe towards Asia um, at some point. Um, another thing that we have learned uh, from a last year's study is that uh, where they tried to um, connect the Black Death with post-Black Death outbreaks in Europe. Um, and uh, that from sequencing uh, one of the last documented outbreaks in Europe the, from the Plague of Marseille between seven, uh, 1720 and 1722 is that um, there is a lineage or a new branch, if you like, that descends directly from the Black Death strain that gives rise to these um, later outbreaks seen here by the strains uh, of the Plague of Marseille. And this shows that there must be um, a long genetic history shared between the Black Death and these later outbreaks that occurred in Europe. Um, but the unknowns um, were still, and what we're still trying to find out is whether uh, the post-Black Death outbreaks that have been documented in Europe until the 18th century are, res are a result of multiple introductions of the disease into Europe in um, independent phases, or whether it's a result of a persi persistence of a disease um, that happened, or a foci focus that was formed after the Black Death in Europe, and therefore contributed to these post-Black Death outbreaks that we see um, after that first outbreak. And the another thing that we were trying to find is whether we can find further evidence for this migration of a lineage from Europe towards Asia after the Black Death to contribute to the third pandemic later on in time. Uh, the site that we looked at was one um, a site in Barcelona that most likely coincides with the Black Death event uh, from the 13th century. Uh, second is a site in very special site in Bulgar city in uh, Russia from the second half of the 14th century. So this is an event that is after the Black Death. And third is a site from southwestern Germany in Elwangen uh, that is from an outbreak of plague that happened in the 16th century. In total, we um, analyzed here 178 individuals uh, that were tested for plague, and several of these showed to have um, traces of the bacterium, but of course, not all of these individuals would yield enough DNA for complete genome reconstruction. So to talk a little bit about the, the methods that we use to reconstruct these genomes or to, to get access actually to these, to these genomes in the lab, is we first start from a tooth and we, um, where we cut the tooth in the cementua enamel junction and then we sample from inside the tooth because it's the pulp chamber that is most likely to um, contain all the dried blood vessels that might be associated to a blood-borne pathogen like Yersinia pestis. And then, of course, after we extract the DNA from this bone powder, we don't only find in there the DNA of the pathogen, but of course, a lot of environmental DNA, including um, soil bacteria and plant, of course, the human DNA that is associated with the individual that we are sampling, and fungi. And uh, what we do after that to be able to access uh, this pathogen DNA is, uh, is an array hybridization capture approach where um, 
we use uh, a glass slide, which is here represented by the green line onto which there are single-stranded probes attached um, that are complementary to the, to the DNA that we're interested in, which in this case would be the Yersinia pestis DNA. Um, whatever would, uh, so whatever, when we expose uh, the, this DNA mixture to our array, we expect that only the, or ideally, only the DNA that is um, associated to this pathogen, to Yersinia pestis, would stick onto these probes, and therefore we can then sequence the DNA, and um, what comes out of sequencing is these uh, small reads that are now represented there by the, the, gray, um, the gray bars uh, that we can then fit together and reconstruct the whole pestis genome. So after doing this, um, we were lucky enough to um, yield one pestis genome from each one of the sites that we um, studied. Um, the, high, the best preserved sample yielded an uh, almost 20-fold genome for us, which was um, really great. And so when we try now to fit these into the family tree of Resinia pestis, we see that um, first the site from Barcelona um, or the strain that we isolated from Barcelona seems to be identical to the strain that we got um, or people got from 2011 um, in this initial reconstruction of the Black Death strain from London, which suggests that um, most likely there was a single entry of the bacterium in Europe, so there was a single strain that entered in Europe during the Black Death. Um, and also there was very, very low diversity in the bacterium during that time. Second, we, um, from the, the strain that we reconst reconstructed from Russia, so from Bulgar city in Tatarstan, um, we find this strain to sit on branch one, um, but even more further derived from this second uh, London strain from the late 14th century, suggesting not only genetically, but also geographically, that there is a link between these second pandemic strains that we see and the third plague pandemic, perhaps by a lineage that migrated towards the east um, after the Black Death and eventually diverged further um, and eventually caused the third plague pandemic later in the 19th century. And last, um, our plague strain from Elwangen um, seems to fall on the same branch um, as the, the, the one formed by the Plague of Marseille strain, um, giving it further, um, suggesting even further that there's a, there's a link between the Black Death and these post-Black Death outbreaks that we find in Europe, likely because all of these strains share a, a genetic history that is, is probably dates back to the Black Death event, and therefore suggesting that there might have been a focus of, of plague that remained in Europe until the 18th century, when plague essentially disappeared from the continent. And to finish, uh, I would like to summarize everything with this uh, schematic. Um, so what we have seen until now is that the Black Death entered in Europe um, in the 14th century, perhaps uh, with very low diversity, perhaps it was just one strain uh, of the bacterium that have entered and diversified in Europe to, to, to give rise to two lineages. One that eventually um, went all the way back to China to later diversify even further and be associated with the third pandemic, but also one that stayed behind to cause um, a lot of these, or at least a, a big proportion of these uh, uh, outbreaks that we see in Europe after the Black Death. And uh, with this, I would like to thank uh, my supervisors, Johannes Krause, Kirsten Boss, and Alexander Herbig, and of course, all the group in Vienna for uh, all their support, um, the collaborators from the Kazan Federal University <coughs> in Russia, from the collaborators from Bordeaux, the people from Tübingen, um, and the people from the Baden-Württemberg um, State Collection, and of course, all of you for your attention. Вот мало друга,